Uh, thank you again for uh, being here for our next city briefing and update. Uh, we are at April the 22nd. It is uh, Earth Day, actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day today. Um, and we are doing our briefing um, this, uh, this Wednesday. Um, and of course, I want to begin by thanking uh, Alice from the Health Department, who will be doing our update in Spanish in just a, a few minutes. So in Espanol, vamos a tener un, uh, un resumen en Espanol después de esto. And then, of course, Paola, who's right behind us, who's doing our ASL translation. And we're joined, um, as, as, as usual, with Dr. Davis from the Health Department, who will be giving us more updates uh, about what's going on with, the, with our health orders uh, and the city as well. Uh, so we'll have a, um, several updates today, but I want to start with probably the, the, the one issue that we're getting the most questions on uh, and the one where we have a lot of great information to share as well, and that is as it relates to, to testing. Uh, let me begin by giving you some overall, uh, some overall data and some overall numbers. Um, and some of these numbers are approximate, and I'll, ex I'll explain why in, in just a minute. Uh, let me start with going over our uh, numbers. We believe in Long Beach that through both uh, our, our partners um, within, the, uh, uh, within the health world, so our private health partners and our drive-through testing centers, uh, that we, as, 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 a, as, a, uh, as a unit, uh, have done a significant amount of tests. So we estimate that we've completed in Long Beach about 4,700 tests for COVID-19. Um, and the, of those 4,700 tests, about 2,300 of those have been through our four drive-through testing centers, uh, most of which of those were opened just this week. And another 2,500 of those have been through private labs and our health partners across the city of Long Beach. So how did we break those down? Um, I want to begin by, uh, by mentioning that uh, of those, we think that through our main health department lab, and that's been our main drive through center uh, in Long Beach, we've done about 430 uh, uh, tests. Our Long Beach City College Pacific Coast campus site, we've done um, about uh, 1,100 tests, 1,170 um, tests. Uh, through our Jordan High School site, we've done almost 400 tests, and this is as of today. Uh, and our Cabrillo High School site, we've done about 180 tests. And so uh, those numbers, uh, when, you, when, you, when you combine those and you look at what we're doing, uh, with the amount of tests that have been done through our private labs, uh, we approximate about 4,700. The reason why it's an approximate number is we don't always get an exact count from all of the private labs. Uh, of course, we have direct counts in our four drive-through centers, um, but uh, it's a little bit more broad. And so uh, we are doing a lot of tests. We have tripled our testing capacity in just this last week. And as you can see, we are getting a lot more of these tests at our drive-through uh, centers. We want to encourage folks that if you have a symptom to get tested. So if you have a symptom, um, you're feeling like you uh, are, are sick or have these flu-like types of symptoms, these COVID symptoms, please go get tested either at Long Beach City College on Pacific Coast Highway, at Jordan High School, or at Cabrillo. And of course, we also have now our St. Mary uh, a testing center as well. And we're getting those numbers coming in. And when we, when we include those numbers that we're going to be getting in the next few days, we certainly are uh, um, over the 5,000 tests. And we're going to have a, a clearer picture um, of, of those numbers towards the end of the week when we have a full week of data. And so that gives you an approximation of where, uh, where testing is going. Um, I, I mention all of this because we want folks to get screened and get tested. They can go to the longbeach.gov website, click the testing uh, page, and then you can pick which testing site you want to go to and go right through the testing process uh, and get screened right there and make your appointment. There are appointments available. So my message to everyone is if you feel like you need a test and have symptoms, go right now today and get a test, make an appointment for the next day or so at one of our, at one of our sites. That gives you the broader uh, testing picture of where we are. And, and of course, I want to share some of our, our, our general numbers for, for today. We are up to uh, 489 uh, residents who have been tested positive for, for COVID-19. Um, I also want to uh, report, sadly, that our total deaths are about 27. Um, we know that these numbers are always changing, 
and our, our, our thoughts, and of course, uh, are always with the families, and our prayers are with the families, and of course, uh, the friends of those that we have lost. So far of the 27, um, all have had other underlying health conditions, and they have been, of course, uh, through their 50s, all the way through their 80s. Uh, that has been the, the age range uh, of these individuals. We continue to lose folks, um, but we also continue to see uh, positive recoveries. And so that is also the positive thing. Um, I'm not sure, I think we have, we wanna say that we're almost at 300 recoveries um, of individuals that have recovered uh, from COVID-19. Um, that is a good, a good sign. Uh, that number also changes, but it's something that we're continuing to monitor um, and are very, very grateful for. Uh, and so again, we expect as this testing is ramped up, that our positive COVID number is gonna actually continue to, to increase. And uh, we think we may even see a spike over the course of this next few days or week because there is just way more testing happening uh, this week uh, than there was last week or the week before. And so um, we're gonna keep uh, an eye on for that. We're gonna let folks know um, how, that is, uh, how that is going. Our hospitals, just so you know, um, are working really hard. Uh, none have reached a, a, a point where they are overburdened with capacity or full. We've created all, all that extra room and all those extra beds in preparation, um, and they are doing really, really well. That's not to say it's not a difficult environment, uh, that our nurses and doctors still don't need our help with, with these stay-at-home uh, orders, um, but we are, as a community, we're managing things to you, thanks to all of you being responsible, uh, being at home, uh, listening to uh, the advice of our, of our medical team, uh, we are uh, being are able to flatten this curve and are really providing a level of relief that our hospitals need right now because they are seeing COVID patients on top of all the other patients they have in, their, in, in those hospitals. And so a thank you from all of them and let's keep that work going. And so uh, we'll have um, more information than that as that continues, but so far, we are doing okay, and we got and we got to stay there. I want to bridge uh, bridge that to a, a conversation that the governor had earlier today. Uh, the governor announced earlier a huge ramp up in testing uh, statewide, and so you probably um, are reading that he is announcing um, additional testing sites all up and down the state of California, and expects to ramp up testing uh, dramatically um, within this next week. Uh, we are working with the governor on, on that initiative as well. And so uh, we are hopeful that we will have additional drive-through testing capacity um, uh, uh, moving forward. That's all being worked out right now through the governor and our partners at LA County. But that's something we hope, we hope to have more information about uh, in the near future. So even more testing capacity uh, is, it's on, is on its way. Uh, I wanna add on a, a couple other items um, that are important. Uh, one question that we always get is, is the street sweeping question. Uh, as people probably know, uh, the city uh, has not been ticketing for street sweeping, and we've been doing that over the course of this last month. Uh, we believe that um, folks that are struggling uh, should not have that additional uh, burden of having to move their car, especially in parking impacted areas. We also know that street sweeping is really important to keeping the city clean, for water quality and to clean storm drains. And so please know that uh, well, this is a temporary measure, but we have to get back to fully street sweeping the city. So what are we doing? What's the plan moving forward? As you've probably been aware, the city paused giving out citations on street sweeping. Uh, we did that because we wanted to give people that relief, particularly those that are struggling. Uh, that citation uh, uh, relief was set to end at the end of this month. So that was going all the way through and, uh, until the, the beginning of May. Uh, last night, the city council extended that citation relief by an additional few weeks. And so now the date of the resuming of, the, uh, of, of that citation enforcement process won't be until May the 18th which aligns with our current end of our stay at home order. Uh, and so that doesn't mean, by the way, that the stay at home order is gonna end on the 18th. There could be changes, there could be an extension. We could see some, uh, some changes that relates to the economy um, around that time. We just don't know yet. 
but that's the alignment that we've now done. And so what, what can you expect to see? The first thing you can expect is that beginning May the 4th or early May, our street sweepers are gonna come out in full force across the city. We have been doing already street sweeping across the city. That hasn't stopped, but it's been difficult to do because a lot of cars aren't being moved, which we understand. Doing, beginning May 4th, we will street sweep the entire city. If car, we're asking folks to move their cars and to please move their cars. We've also provided over 5,000 free parking spaces across the city for people to park their cars temporarily. And again, at the Long Beach.gov website, you can apply for a free parking permit and one of these parking lots to move your car and, and you can keep your car there if you like as well. So beginning May 4th, you're gonna see the street sweepers out and they're gonna try as much as they can. If there's a car that has not moved, we're not gonna give you a citation, uh, which was the current uh, plan as, as we probably know towards the end of the month. We're gonna leave a warning on your car and just ask folks to please understand that in a week, few weeks after that, we have to go back to enforcement because if we don't enforce, we won't be able to sweep the whole city. We're gonna have massive trash collected, public health and safety issues, and storm drain issues. We are required also from a water quality perspective to keep the water system free of debris. And this is causing us some issues which, which could cause us serious infrastructure issues as it relates to water quality. And so May 4th, street troopers come out. And then for the two weeks after that, we will start giving people uh, 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 basically messages to let them know that street sweeping will resume uh, with enforcement come May 18th, but also options for folks, giving them lists of where the free parking is, showing them how we can help them move their car. And so just know everyone that we wanna work with you. Uh, we have been very um, lenient because we think that it's the right thing to do. And we're gonna continue to uh, assess and be flexible. We, want, we don't wanna put any burden on you guys, but we also know that we have gotta clean our streets. So we're trying to find a right balance and we'll have more information on that in the weeks ahead. If you want a free permit, please go to longbeach.gov forward slash parking. It's longbeach.gov forward slash parking and you can get your free parking permit. And again, um, we have already, I think about 1300 of you have applied for a parking permit, which we're providing for free. We have an additional over 4,000 spaces ready to be used by the community that we've set aside. So please use those uh, if you can. And as a reminder, you can still receive a citation if you park in the red in front of a fire, uh, 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 more of a fire um, uh, 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 a zone, or if you park in the blue. And why is that? Is that red, red and these blue zones are emergency turn lanes. They're there so that a fire engine can turn at the appropriate radius. And they're there in case there's a fire, we can plug in and get water and, 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 and save lives and property. And so those areas have to stay clear and you cannot park in those areas because of the life and safety issues. And because we have a lot of folks calling in and having needs around COVID-19 also from our paramedics, we need to keep those clean. So please, red curbs, blue curbs, white curbs, now those continue to have enforcement and just remember that please. I want to um, now uh, just transition to a couple other other topics. Uh, we have, um, our, of course, we have an amazing library system in Long Beach. I want to remind folks, especially uh, that while you're at home, that you, we have a, a library at home program here in the city. If you go to our library website from longbeach.gov, you can access uh, thousands and thousands of free books, and audio books, uh, podcasts, uh, all sorts of different things that will allow folks to uh, get resources and, and books into their home. We know that people uh, want access to these programs. They are all available at our libraries. Uh, you can also, uh, there's, there's practice programs there for, for taking SATs, for, uh, for uh, citizenship, uh, to help people navigate um, legal questions. There's all dozens of programs uh, that are available through our library system. Um, and all you have to do is sign up for an online library card to access all of these programs through our library system. So I encourage you to use our library at home program that's available now uh, for, the, for the community. I also wanna, uh, wanna note that 
Uh, we announced yesterday our Economic Recovery Advisory Group. Uh, we um, listed the members yesterday. We put together a, a great group of, of business leaders, community leaders, uh, uh, innovative thinkers um, to really share with the community and with the city and us what is the best way to, uh, to reopen the economy in a way that is safe to the public. Now, we know that when the question of when the, re the economy opens is one that's going to be left to science and data and our medical professionals. But how we do so and the safest way to do so is a question that we need to be asking the folks that are in our businesses on the ground, our small business owners, um, and, and our great thinkers here in the city and across the state. So we are going to be getting and collecting the best ideas so that when we begin uh, loosening up these restrictions uh, in these weeks ahead as we have this conversation, uh, we're going to have the best plans in place because we know that people are out of work, we want the economy to restart, and we want to do it in a safe way. And we are not going to be uh, pressured into uh, reopening things before it's safe. We're going to do those in a way that is appropriate. And so I want to thank Mayor Bob Foster, who's leading that group, uh, and the 20 members that are all a part of, uh, of that group. They're going to be providing their recommendations over the course of these next few weeks. And, so, and I want to thank them. Uh, and the last thing I'll just add before I turn this over to Dr. Davis is, again, uh, we are celebrating 50 years of Earth Day. Uh, it's ironic that on this Earth Day, most of us are, are, are inside or are at home and are not able to enjoy um, our, amazing, uh, our amazing planet and our parks um, and our beaches the way we would love. Um, it's, it's also, of course, um, ironic that uh, our, our sky and our air quality is probably the cleanest uh, it has been um, uh, for the, since we've been celebrating Earth Day. Um, but we want to just thank you uh, for uh, conserving water and still trying to practice the best that we can uh, around, um, around this important uh, uh, commemoration that we have every single year. Uh, again, I want to I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch. We'll have more information on Friday, and now I'd like to turn this over to Dr. Davis, uh, who's going to give an update as well. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon. Over the weekend, we increased the city's capacity to test up to 500 people daily. Like the mayor mentioned, as we continue to ramp up testing across the city, we anticipate the number of positive cases to also rise. If you're waiting for your test results please follow the quarantine and isolation health orders as they apply to you. And you can find those on our longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 website under view current health orders. If you test positive in one of our drive through testing sites, you'll receive a phone call and a letter in the mail. At this point, you must isolate yourself in a separate room from others in your household who are not sick. You should notify any close contacts of your status and tell them uh, to self-quarantine. If you test negative, you'll receive an email. If you don't have an email address, you'll receive a phone call. Protecting ourselves, our households, and our community comes down to each of us, following the guidelines to self-isolate if we're sick and self-quarantine if we've been in contact with someone who is sick. Close contacts include individuals who live together, intimate partners, and anyone who's been within six feet of a contagious person for more than 10 minutes. Even people who haven't been tested but are exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 should isolate themselves at home until they are cleared and notify any potential close contacts that they should self-quarantine. And I just want to review what uh, being cleared from self-isolation for COVID entails. So number one, there should be seven days um, since your symptoms started. Number two, there should be three days of no fever, and that's without using any fever-reducing medicines. And number three, uh, your symptoms should have improved. So that's how you can clear yourself from self-isolation. And if you're a close contact and you're self-quarantining, you need to do that for 14 days. So I want to turn to the heat wave that we're expecting. The city of Long Beach expects a heat wave starting this weekend. Uh, we're recommending that uh, all of our residents stay hydrated and wear light clothing. If you must leave your home to seek a cooler climate, 
please continue to maintain six feet of separation from others. Carry a mask, uh, a cloth facial covering, in case you find yourself in an area where you cannot physically distance yourself from others. If you can't maintain a physical distance of six feet, uh, put on the cloth face covering um, until you can uh, get to that distance. Finally, for all latest information and updates, please continue to check our website, www.longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19. And you can also follow us at Long Beach City on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. We'll do questions from uh, the press, and then after that, we will turn over for our, our Spanish recap from uh, Alice Castellanos from the Health Department. So, Jake, questions? Yeah, the first question is from Rachel from ABC7. Go ahead, Rachel. Hey, so this question is for the mayor. Um, Governor Newsom mentioned earlier that hospitals will now be rescheduling surgeries um, amid the coronavirus emergency. So can you tell us what would be the first step in starting to reopen the city? I know you had mentioned the uh, economic recovery advisory group, but are there any plans in place and what would come first? So um, obviously um, we were heartened to hear the governor uh, make, making that announcement today. And so of course, different ho all, all of our hospitals that are, that are all part of different systems will be making, of course, their uh, we'll be planning kind of how they incorporate those recommendations, right? And so that's going to be uh, hospital for hospital, uh, system for system, uh, phase in. Um, as it relates to the re the reopening of the of the of the economy itself, um, I, I can tell you that uh, the amount of work and that went into how we uh, uh, kind of shut down the economy and kind of got people to stay home and all of that uh, uh, coordination. Uh, that level of, of work, which was a huge citywide, statewide effort, is going into how we uh, reopen in a way that is safe. So not only do we have uh, the governor and the state and their principals, uh, they are continuing to put out guidelines and are going to be setting some type of statewide baseline for all cities and counties to follow. Then, of course, we have our local uh, economic recovery group, uh, who will be meeting? I believe they're going to uh, 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 they're going to be meeting in, the, in within days, within the next few days, uh, and they're going to be putting together a set of recommendations on uh, what the best way to open is when we reopen, and what are some of the innovative ideas out there for uh, for a small retailer, or how do we reopen um, uh, some of these recreation activities that that we that, that we want to see? Uh, how, how do we uh, how do we ensure that? Um, that restaurants in the future can operate in a way that is safe, that is creative. Um, so they're going to come up with some really great ideas and present those uh, to, to us, to our health officers, um, so that we take all of those in and that the health department is able to put out a very clear and clean set of, um, of reopening orders uh, when we are ready to do so. So the key question uh, is, I, I, am, I am confident that we're going to have a great plan of how to reopen. And, and I have heard from restaurant owners, uh, from uh, folks that are park enthusiasts, uh, from small business owners, from folks that own coffee shops, and these small business owners have the absolute best ideas on how they can make uh, their shop, their business, their restaurant safe. So social dis distancing, um, facial coverings, uh, separation, limiting occupancy, uh, uh, the way that they interact with customers. So the ideas are going to be there. The key question to me is the, issue, the, the, the question around when. Mm -hmm. And the when question is very different than the how question. I think the how question is, uh, is what we're working on furiously right now. The when question has to be guided completely by what's the right thing to do as it relates to public health. And that decision is going to be led by the people that know the most about public health, doctors, scientists, and our health professionals. And that's the advice that, that we're going to listen to statewide. It should be the advice we're listening to across the country. And it certainly is what we're going to be doing here locally. And so that, that when question uh, is, uh, is something we're discussing. And I will, I will, um, I am, we're having that conversation every day. 
Mm -hmm. I'm having that conversation tonight with the with the group of, of mayors from the largest cities in the state, have, having that conversation uh, in a few days with our friends, um, with, with Mayor Garcetti and, um, and the, the supervisors in, in, in LA County. So we are really struggling with this, but we want at the end of the day, do the right thing around public health. And so that's, those are the key things. And I think the how to do it and the when to do it are actually two very different things. And we're working on both right now. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next question is from Kelly from the Long Beach Post. Go ahead, Kelly. Is Kelly there? All right, let's go ahead and try Haley and see if Haley's on there. Let's give us one second here. All right, well, we just went down, it looks like on our media line, but I've got some questions here from social media while we try to go ahead and restart the media line. So our media individuals, if you would, please stand by and we'll go ahead and ask some of these questions from our social media feeds. Mayor, one of the questions that we are getting a lot of, of movement on social media about is about why are masks essential when outdoors and or this could be Dr. Davis as well. And uh, as long as there are people social, that are physically distancing themselves, especially at places like the beach, and open public spaces like the parks, why, why are they not open yet? Or why are we not making efforts to open that, especially with this heat wave coming? Well, there's, there's two questions in there. Why don't I let Dr. Davis um, speak to the question around face coverings and masks, and I'll speak to the question around why we're not opening uh, immediately beaches and, and, and parks, so Dr. Davis. You want me to go first? Yeah. So um, the question around why should you wear face coverings huh? if you are out in public and you're physically distanced, like if you're out in um, natural surroundings and you're physically dif distanced. Um, so I think in those instances, so the number one thing is to be physically distanced, six feet away from everyone. And so if that is the case, as you're uh, taking your walk or your run or what have you, um, that is okay. You, we recommend that you have a face covering with you in case you should meet or uh, inadvertently come into contact with somebody who's also out in that surrounding um, and you're unable to maintain that six foot distance, then you would be, um, have your face covering ready. And in addition to that, I think obviously face coverings are required if you're going into a business, into mm -hmm. a retailer, if you're on your way to uh, a, 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 a grocery store, all of that requires a face covering. Um, what, what in the county and in the city, what Dr. Davis is referring to is that if you are uh, taking a, a walk uh, a, a, alone and there's no one around you, around your, around your block, um, in the health order, that isn't mm -hmm. legally required for you to wear a face covering. But if you are doing so with other people around or there are people right. in, 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 on your street or that you're passing, then you should be wearing a face covering. And so that's, uh, that's, those are in the health order. Uh, uh, the way I kind of, you know, um, as a non-medical person, the way I kind of do it in my head is uh, when I am, when I'm going, if I'm in my car alone, I think you're okay, you know, you're, you know, I'm not wearing a face covering. Uh, but certainly when I, when I walk out of my car and I'm, I'm in transit somewhere, I'm walking to a store, I'm walking to, when I, when I walk uh, in, into, into this uh, studio, um, we should all be wearing our face coverings. And so face covering is just an additional layer of protection. But the most important piece of protection, as Dr. Davis always says, is physical distancing. Um, the second part of that question, Jake, uh, was around why aren't we opening up beaches more and parks? Yeah. Let's go ahead and just stand by for a second. We have some technical difficulties here. If you would, just go ahead and if you can hear us, we're going to go ahead and restart the, the broadcast here. We just lost the live stream here. Just give us a, a few few moments. Okay. All right. We are back on our Facebook Live event here. We're going to go ahead and finish off with a question about the beaches and places like the park. Mayor, if you would. Sure. Thank you. And uh, apologies for the technical difficulties. I think we, uh, we, I think we just had a... Um, the network that went down in the building, and so apologize for that, but we'll answer all the questions that are in front of us. Um, the question was, why aren't uh, you know parks and beaches open, um, especially if you can, folks can wear face coverings? Um, the reason why the parks and beaches aren't open is because it's not safe. And uh, right now, we still have a extremely contagious virus uh, that is being transmitted, that is hospitalizing people, and that people are dying from. And so uh, 
until the medical professionals believe that we, we have an environment where it's safe enough to allow folks to go back onto the beach and other places, then we will move in that direction. But they have not made those determinations yet. And I think that all of us should be taking our advice from the medical professionals. I think, you know, unfortunately, you, you do see some other um, places across the country and other locations uh, moving, um, in my opinion, uh, uh, too quickly and, um, and, and not taking the advice in, in, in many respects of, of our own CDC and our, and our federal authorities. And so I think that uh, we will all, everything will reopen when it's safe to do so. So that, that's just a continuation of that question. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Dr. Davis, there's a question relating uh, on our social media, and I'll just ask this question, then we'll get back over to our media to allow them to get back online here. But how are the positive residents in nursing homes being isolated? Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on the process within our nursing homes and how to minimize the spread of COVID-19 in that community? So the health department works very closely with the facilities to make sure that we are cohorting positive residents. So that means we put them all together. Um, and then that we also are managing and really paying a lot of attention to where we put the quarantined residents as well. So those that are not positive, but have been exposed so that we can watch and monitor for symptoms. So there's actually a, a lot of um, conversation that goes back and forth between the health department and the facilities to make sure that uh, we have everybody in the safest place as possible and that we're also limiting um, which staff interact with the positive um, patients versus the staff that interact with the negative patients. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Davis. All right. We're going to go over to our media inquiries right now. We have Kelly from the Long Beach Post. Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, hi. This question is for Dr. Davis, and this actually follows up on the nursing home question. Uh, L.A. County today announced a new um, strategy to begin testing all individuals in nursing homes, uh, staff and patients, regardless of whether they show symptoms. Want to know if Long Beach was going to plan on following this lead, considering the high rate of deaths in nursing homes in our city? And a second part of the question, um, LA County this week is also planning to release the number of fatalities uh, per facility, which Long Beach hasn't yet released. I want to know if Long Beach is planning on releasing those numbers. And if not, then uh, why would that be? So thank you for the question. So the first part of the question is about testing in uh, facilities where there have been positive cases. Uh, yes, Long Beach has in, been in active discussion with state and federal um, authorities about expanding testing to asymptomatic individual uh, individuals, uh, both staff and residents in facilities where there have been positive cases. That will help us to uh, to inform our decisions about cohorting and um, having patients and staff be in the safest place possible. Um, so I do think that that's an expansion that we will be doing as well. Um, and then to your uh, second question, um, so we are, um, uh, we're following the state's guidelines as far as um, information that's released. Uh, we feel that it's very important to release actionable information um, that uh, helps the public health. And so following the state's guidelines and the guidelines that um, the majority of counties throughout uh, the state are following. Uh, we will release the information that they're releasing, which doesn't include fatalities at this time. Um, but that is always an ongoing uh, conversation. And, and, and I'll add to that as well, um, just because I think this is a, important. I think there's, there's a lot, been a lot of interest. So we, we had a, we're aware of, um, of the, the move the county uh, is making as it relates to reporting. I mean, it's always been our intention to follow kind of the state standard on reporting, um, but uh, uh, there is a, a right for the public to know as much information as possible um, within uh, 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 privacy, privacy law uh, as it relates to, to, mm -hmm. to public health. And so that exact question, Kelly, that you asked, uh, I was in a conversation just earlier today uh, with our leadership on, and it is being actively discussed, and I expect um, and Dr. Davis, you, you know, stop me if I go too far, but I, I expect that within the next uh, 24 hours or so, we're going to have an an, a more definitive answer mm -hmm. on what the next step is as far as releasing information, because it's being actively discussed right now um, on, on, on how far we can go 
uh, as it relates to uh, within within state law and we've been uh, we have tried to follow our um, a follow and or partner with the county on the way reporting is being done and so we're aware of that and we know it's a, a critical issue and it, it is for us as well thank you mayor this next question is uh, geared towards Dr. Davis, and it really talks about expanded testing. Will that include individuals that are maybe asymptomatic, but people that are working in essential businesses? Do you have a plan for that, or is there an anticipated plan for that? So right now, the plan is to expand uh, asymptomatic testing within the long-term care facilities where they have outbreaks. Um, there certainly is discussion about expanding asymptomatic testing. We want everybody who needs to have a test or feels like they should have a test to be able to have a test. So um, as the testing expands, we definitely will um, welcome everyone who feels that they need to have a test. And I'll, I'll add, I think, I think one of the great things about this expansion that the governor is talking about is um, we have to do a lot more testing. And so uh -huh. in, in Long Beach, um, when we launch these testing sites, we've been seeing them get busier uh, every day and we're seeing, we're seeing them um, get more and more capacity. And so as we add more testing and we will be adding more testing even beyond the 500 uh, capacity that we have right now daily, uh, dependent on, of course, uh, the folks that are coming in, how those appointments are being, are being full, are being utilized, we're gonna be uh, looking at other essential type workers, first and foremost, mm -hmm. our skilled nursing facilities um, and other types of, of folks. Uh, when we're talking about, you know, is it, is it first responders? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously we wanna make sure that our medical personnel uh, and other frontline folks can get a test when they need it. Um, but those decisions have yet to fully be made, but they're being considered as the state expands their testing. And that actually was alluded to today by, by Governor Newsom. And so, um, when we get our next testing site, drive-through site or testing site, which will be in addition to the four we have, and we will get another one, uh, we're working with the state and the county on what that one will look like, and maybe it'll be a little different than the others, and we're, we're having those discussions right now. Mayor, this is another question uh, from social media, and it re relates to around the uh, Economic Recovery Advisor Group that was established. And one of the individuals here on Facebook asked, are these salaried and paid positions, or are these individuals that have volunteered to step into this role? All volunteer. Uh, they're all doing this because they love they love our city um, like, like, like all of you do. And so uh, these are folks that are all volunteering their time, and we're very, very grateful to them. So thank you. Dr. Davis, we'll go ahead and wrap up with this question, but there's some individuals out here that are waiting for their test results and they really haven't been notified and some of them are going on a few days and like to know how long should they wait and where do they call if they, or they're not getting the results in a timely manner? Uh, we'll post where they can call, uh, but we're actively working with the laboratory to uh, get results for um, folks that have been tested. And we will be um, calling or emailing or sending letters as soon as we get these results. And, and folks should know um, the reason there's delays is because uh, we can perform the tests, and we do, but then they have to go to a, to a lab for, to get those tests um, obviously uh, completed. And as you can imagine, the backup at labs up and down the state and the country is, is enormous. And so uh, some labs will have different backups than others. Um, we, we've noticed that um, in the labs that we work with in Long Beach, we right now have some labs that are turning around a result in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And so some of you that are getting tested in Long Beach are getting a 48 hour result. Uh, in other cases, you might be getting a test uh, in Long Beach that might be going to a different lab and that might be taking six, seven days. And that's not a, just a Long Beach challenge, that's actually happening all across the country where you have different locations where you can get a test and you can get results back in, 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 in a day or two days uh, other places you can get the same exact test or, or, or a similar test, and that might take you a week. And so we're trying to um, also move our resources. So if we know a lab is not performing as they should be, we're trying to get um, the other labs that are able to take more capacity to cover more of the tests. So that's something that's happening and moving, moving very quickly. And we've already made quick adjustments, but we do know that there is a group of folks that got tested in Long Beach um, and their results took longer than they should have because of a uh, issue with our, our, our lab partnership at the LA County site we had at, at, uh, at Long Beach City College. So there, there were some challenges there and those have been fixed and they're continuing to, uh, we're continuing to adapt and change those. 
Great. That that seems to be a majority of the questions that we're getting. And obviously, this is uh, something that we're continuing to work towards. You know, Mayor, there's today is Earth Day, and, and we want to really make sure that people are aware that uh, they're getting some feedback here on Facebook that uh, the streets are fully used gloves and masks. Can you just talk a little bit about what we're encouraging people to, to keep our, our city looking looking good? Yeah, I, 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 I just have I have no um, I can't I can't believe that I have seen as many of you have folks uh, throw their their masks or their gloves on onto the floor uh, in, in, in parking lots. It's completely irresponsible and no regard for public health or, or safety of other people. And again, on, on this Earth Day, we should be we should never be littering. But uh, uh, but to do to do so during a health crisis like this is, is really irresponsible. So please keep our city clean, keep our planet clean. Uh, don't litter. Period. No matter what it is. Uh, and, and let's take care of our community and, and, and the folks that live here. Thank you very much, Mayor. One question about volunteering. Folks, if you want to volunteer, please make sure you follow us and, and visit us at www.longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 and click on their I want to help and there'll be a volunteer link for you to engage. Mayor, that's it for the questions from Facebook and uh, from our media. If you would, you can continue on, sir. Thank you. And then I will turn this over to uh, Alice to do a recap for us in Spanish. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Alcalde Robert Garcia. Eh, muy buenas tardes a todos ustedes. También gracias por acompañarnos hoy, el 22 de abril, que también celebramos el aniversario del Día de la Tierra. Uh, tenemos varias actualizaciones para compartir con usted hoy, pero vamos a empezar con unos datos de las pruebas de coronavirus en la ciudad. Desde hoy tenemos 489 residentes de Long Beach que han tenido resultados positivos del coronavirus. Este, hemos recibido uh, varias preguntas sobre las pruebas y los sitios donde hacemos las pruebas y los números. Uh, en total, en completo de los cuatro sitios donde hemos hecho pruebas del coronavirus, hay más de 4,700 uh, 700 pruebas hechas. En el Departamento de Salud han habido como 430 En, en el colegio de Long Beach City College sobre la PCH han habido 1,170. En Jordan High School oh, casi 400. Y en Cabrillo High School oh, unos aproximadamente 180 uh, pruebas del coronavirus. Y también, claro, con otros um, sitios privados y nuestras uh, clínicas y laboratorios privados hemos visto a un total como... <coughs> otros 2,300 más. So, queremos más decirles que esos no, números van a, van a brincar. Vamos a abrir más sitios de pruebas uh, en el futuro y también les tenemos más información sobre eso cuando lo tengamos. Este, también queremos decirles que entre más pruebas a, a, hagamos en la ciudad, también esos números de los positivos va a ir uh, subiendo también. Este, lamentamos compartir que hemos perdido tres residentes más de Long Beach por esta enfermedad. Nuestro total ahora es 27. Este, han visto muchas preguntas sobre los servicios de barredoras y los que limpian las calles de Long Beach. Queremos uh, decirles que anoche la alcaldía de la ciudad de Long Beach extendió la suspensión temporal de las multas de barrido de las calles hasta el 18 de mayo para alinearse con la nueva orden de salud más segura en el hogar de la ciudad. Aunque los vehículos no serán multados, queremos aclarar que las operaciones regulares de barrido de calles regresará regularmente el 4 de mayo para eliminar los escombros y la basura de nuestras calles. Um, les pedimos a los residentes que, por favor, si es posible, muevan sus vehículos siempre que sea posible para acomodar a nuestros barredores. Le, uh, otra vez, el 4 de mayo, um, les, los empleados de nuestro Departamento de Obras Públicas colocarán tarjetas de recordatorio a cualquier vehículo que no se haya movido. Las tarjetas informarán a los residentes sobre la necesidad de mover sus automóviles, los recursos de estacionamiento disponibles en la ciudad y recordatorio que los servicios empezarán de nuevo desde el 18 de mayo. Para abordar los continuos impactos de estacionamiento causados por el coronavirus, hemos puesto a disposición más de 4,000 espacios de estacionamiento adicionales en varios lotes de la playa, centros de biblioteca y escuelas unificadas de Long Beach y en toda la ciudad. En este momento también pueden um, aplicar por un permiso para poder estacionarse en estos sitios. Um, unos datos sobre el Grupo de Asesor de Recuperación Económica. Um, 
sabemos que platicamos sobre esto el, el lunes también, pero nomás queremos decirle que este grupo uh, va a hacer recomendaciones uh, de varios departamentos de la ciudad en la transición estratégica de la ciudad y sus operaciones normales una vez que la pandemia del coronavirus permita cambios y en las órdenes de salud, primeramente. Uh, las decisiones sobre cómo y cuándo abriremos la economía se alineará con la orden del gobernador de en casa, el gobernador uh, y todas las órdenes de salud. La ciudad creará un foro en línea para alentar el compromiso cívico. Queremos saber de usted y, y es, esto ayudará a comprender mejor las necesidades de nuestra comunidad mientras nos preparemos para el futuro y para abrir uh, nuevamente los negocios. Este, uh, queremos hablarles poquito sobre los recursos de la biblioteca que son muy importantes para los uh, ahorita que los niños están en su casa. La nueva página web, su biblioteca en casa, hace que sea aún más fácil para familias de Long Beach continuar accediendo a muchos de los recursos de nuestra biblioteca. Nuestra, aunque están las puertas cerradas de las bibliotecas, todavía pueden obtener una tarjeta de la biblioteca pública de Long Beach registrándose en línea. Eh, hay cursos de desarrollo profesional al nivel universitario, ayuda con tareas en línea en vivo, aprendizaje de idiomas en línea y también audio, audiolibros y libros en, electrónicos. Nuestro personal de la biblioteca ha estado haciendo un gran trabajo asegurando que los recursos de la biblioteca estén disponibles para todos. Puede activar su tarjeta de biblioteca y también puede llamar al 562 570 5700 desde las 9, 10 de la mañana a 5 de la tarde, martes a sábado. Um, como le dijimos anteriormente que hoy es el aniversario del Día de la Tierra y nomás queremos reflejar cómo podemos formar prácticas más sostenibles para proteger nuestro planeta. Lo le aliento a conservar el agua, la energía, reducir desperdicio, comprar productos ecológicos, cultivar algo y suscribirse a la fracción facturación electrónica de los servicios públicos de Long Beach y otros servicios. También um, queremos recordarle que si puede uh, compartir algunas fotos o consejos a cómo celebrar el Día de la Tierra también. Um, algunos de los datos que uh, nos ha brindado nuestra doctora Davis del Departamento de Salud de Long Beach es el aislamiento y órdenes de cuarentena. A medida que continuamos aumentando las pruebas en toda la ciudad, anticipamos que el número de estos casos positivos va a subir. Eh, si está esperando sus resultados de prueba, por favor siga las órdenes de salud, de cuarentena y aislamiento según sea su caso. Si fue evaluado en uno de nuestros sitios de Long Beach de autoservicio, se lo, los con, contactaremos por teléfono o por correo o por correo electrónico también al respecto de, a sus resultados. La protección de nosotros mismos, nuestros hogares, nuestra comunidad se reduce a cada uno de nosotros siguiendo las órdenes para aislarnos y si estamos enfermos, quedarnos en casa a practicar la cuarentena y si hemos estado en contacto con alguien que está enfermo. Los contactos cercanos incluyen nuestras personas, las personas que viven juntas, uh, parejas íntimas, cualquier persona que haya estado a menos de seis pies de una persona contagiosa durante, uh, es una, uh, durante un tiempo. Este, también tenemos, queremos decirles que las, incluso las personas que no se han hecho la prueba pero presentan síntomas del coronavirus, es recomendado que se aíslen, autoaíslen y también que guarden, uh, eliminen contacto con otras personas. La ciudad de Long Beach espera una ola de calor esta semana y entre el fin de semana. So es muy importante mantenernos hidratados. Si debe salir de su casa para buscar un clima más fresco, continúe manteniendo una separación de seis pies. Otras personas, si salen, por favor, protéjanse con una protección, um, una máscara de protección. Si es que no se puede mantener la distancia física, Siempre es importante también usar uh, la máscara y cargarla con usted a todos tiempos porque nunca sabe si sale de su carro en tránsito, en la marqueta o algún lugar donde, no, donde hay más personas y no es posible a cada minuto pro protegerse con los seis pies, aunque sea es una protección adicional tener esa cobertura puesta. Este, finalmente, para obtener más información y actualizaciones de los uh, eventos recientes, continúe visitándonos en nuestra página de web de la ciudad de Long Beach. Es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias. 
Y muchas gracias para que todos estén mirando. And again, thanks for watching the update. Uh, have a good rest of the day, and we'll be back on Friday at 3 o'clock. Thank you.